Welcome to Panda 2 User Interface Tutorial. In this tutorial, we will get familiar with the Panda 2 User Interface. Start by opening the software. The first screen that you see is the projects list. In the list you will see all your projects that you have opened with Panda 2. The last open project will be at the first in the list. You can also see screenshots from every project, as well as the project folder path, and the game engine version that the project was using. Screenshots will be automatically updated every time you close a project. From the top bar, you can create a new project, open a project, and change settings. In the settings window, you can also reset your settings back to default values and clear the whole projects list. You can remove projects from the project list by placing your cursor over the project and pressing the X button on the top right corner. Load a project by clicking on it. Once the project is loaded, you will see the main screen of the editor. On the left of the top bar, you can see your project name and a module that is currently loaded. On the right side of the top bar, you can find some buttons. The Assets button will show you all the media files in the sidebar. Clicking the button again will switch back to the Classes view. The Devices button will show you all the remote devices that are connected to your project, like tablets and mobile phones. The Modules button will show you all the modules in your project. The Save button will save your changes. With the Export button, you can export your project into various different formats. The Close button will close the project and go back to the project's list. Every time you change the view on the sidebar, the bottom buttons on the sidebar will also change, depending on the view that is active. For example, in the Classes view, the Plus button will add new class. In the bottom of the code editor, you will find five buttons. First button will hide the sidebar, giving you more space on the code editor. Clicking it again will turn the sidebar back to visible. The next button will change the color theme of the code editor. There are 11 different themes that you can choose from. The next two buttons will make the font size of the code editor smaller and bigger. The last button will detach the game view into its own window. This is really handy when working with multiple monitors. Closing the game's window will switch it back to the main window. All changes made to the code editor will be saved automatically. So, the next time when you open the software, the code editor will have the same look as the last time you used it. In the top of the game view, we have buttons too. These buttons will become visible when you move your mouse over to the game view. The first button will reload the whole game. This is useful if you have made changes to your media files or game configuration. The next button will mute all sounds from your game. Click it again to switch sounds back on. The third button will turn on mobile mode. When reloading the game while in mobile mode, it will act like it started from a mobile device. So any mobile specific configuration will take effect. Click the button again to disable mobile mode. The next button will set the game view size to match your game size, so the game won't be scaled up or down. The button after that will open the project in your default browser. All changes are updating to the browser in live too. Next button will take a screenshot of your game view and place the file in your project's folder. It will also automatically number the file name if there are multiple screenshots in the folder. The last button will open Chrome development tools for your game. There, you can access JavaScript consoles and other useful tools for debugging. In the bottom of the game view, we have all of our debugging buttons. We will talk about those in another tutorial. Now you should have a basic knowledge of Panda 2's user interface. Go ahead and start coding.